AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. Jim Struzzi is with us, the president of the Indiana County Chamber of Commerce. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. Good to have you with us here today. The Thanks. Good to be back. Chamber Board of Directors met on, uh, well, last week. Right. Had a number of different interesting things that jumped off the report page mm-hmm. at me. One of those uh, had to do with County Commissioner Rod Ruddick. And we're going to talk with Rod as soon as we can about this. Uh, but okay. Commissioner Ruddick uh, is making a presentation in Harrisburg um, this week. Uh, sounds like it's a pretty important one. Well, sure. Uh, you know what we've been through uh, related to the property tax reassessment here in Indiana County, the the issues that property taxes create for a lot of people. I know it was you know a big item in the recent uh, election, one of the subjects of debate, and it's been something I know that, that Rod uh, and the other commissioners truly care about. They're truly concerned with the impacts that um, property taxes and other forms of taxation have on Indiana County. So Rod was putting together a presentation. He's going to give some testimony. I know he did a lot of research on it, a lot of work, put a lot of time into it. Him and I were talking about it actually on Friday a little bit as well on our way to the Workforce Investment Board. But it's something that that truly needs to be addressed because it is creating such a severe impact on uh, people in Indiana County, in particular those senior citizens, people on a fixed income who, you know, um, thought their property taxes were going to be one thing basically for the rest of their lives and then they change dramatically. And then when you're on a fixed income, that really creates challenges on how do you make ends meet. Byron Stauffer also with a couple of interesting notes (coughs) Mm -hmm. at the Chamber a board of directors meeting um, and everybody is wondering okay windy ridge when's it going <laughs> to happen byron when um those discussions behind the scenes they take a while don't they it, it has been a, a process todd to say the least um byron has been working diligently on that as have um you know many of us with the center for economic operations through the chamber the chamber board of directors we've all uh, been trying to push this thing forward now but no one more so than byron he's been uh in the trenches trying to make this deal happen for a long time now and we're we're really confident we're really hopeful that it's going to happen very soon as from the chamber's perspective, yes. when you hear Byron make a presentation such as he made last week, right? Um, how do you react to that? Do you think, okay, this really is making positive steps, or we're we're churning our wheels and and not really going anywhere? No, how do no. you look at it? It's very positive. Uh, it, it's been a, a little bit here and there, a little bit of progress each time, but uh, the, the deal is very close. Um, I, I I'm really confident it's going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen very soon. Uh, just a few more things need to fall into place, um, but it, it, it's 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 going to happen. And the county continues, of course, uh, to uh, do whatever they can with properties such as Windy Ridge to yes. make them attractive uh, to business and industry. It, it seems like this one would be one of those watersheds that would uh, not only be a solid employment opportunity for Indiana County with 300 or more jobs. Absolutely. But, but other businesses, other industries would look at something like that, and, and maybe it would be a bit of a magnet? Well, that's exactly what would happen. When you get a business of that magnitude to come in here, create you know, three, 400, possibly more good family-sustaining jobs. By family-sustaining, you mean that you, know, the, 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 you can sustain a family on that. It's enough income that you can bring families back to Indiana County. And one of the challenges that we've faced – and we continue to face is demographics. So if we can bring that many jobs in here, that many families back to Indiana County, fill up some of our real estate, that's going to draw even more businesses to come in here. One of the one of the challenges that I've faced since becoming chamber president five years ago now is you try to attract a business to Indiana County and they look at your census numbers <clears throat> and they, you know, they as soon as they see the low population, they don't look at us as a viable location for some of those national chains. But if you can bring more people back to Indiana County, we can attract more businesses to feed off of that major business. So if you have a big anchor like that at Windy Ridge, um, you know, there's a lot of retail space available out there. There's a whole plethora of different opportunities along the Oakland Avenue corridor. So we really think bringing something like this to Indiana County is going to be a game changer for everyone. Well, uh, apropos of that, um, from the manufacturing standpoint, uh, Steve McPherson uh, was was talking to the board of directors about the need to get people here and, uh, and, not just people, but people with viable skills, uh, hands-on skills. Well, that's one of the biggest challenges we face right now, Todd. Not just Indiana County, but all of Western Pennsylvania. If you also saw in the Chamber report last week, Byron and I attended the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission's uh, workshop on the forces of change. Basically, you know, what kind of big issues are we facing here in Western PA that are going to impact our future? And the number one issue, at least from my work group, um, we decided it was 
the workforce. Our group was looking at economic development. One of the biggest deterrents we have right now is workforce. There are a number of jobs out there. If you read the report, manufacturers can't find enough people right now. I mean, to the point where they have to turn away orders, that's, that's saying something. So there's jobs out here in Indiana County right now. We just have to have the people who can fill them. And, and there's a number of factors that come into that. Some of it is population. Some of it is work ethic, you know, trying to find people who can pass a drug test that can show up on time. Uh, they're willing to put in a hard day's work. But there are jobs out there right now. I know a lot of people say there's no jobs, there's no jobs, but that's not what we hear from the business community. Uh, across the board, in every sector, you can look at right now financial health care manufacturing there's jobs available if people are willing to show up on time and put in a hard day's work and skill sets have to be a part of that equation part of it but right now they're so desperate for workers that they're willing to train in many cases oh, yeah. uh, even if you'd go through a short certification program it go to the, the Indiana County Technology Center and you can um, you know go through a short program and find yourself with with truly gainful employment right out of the gate so there's a lot of opportunity out there there's a lot of assistance out there uh, there's grants available for people to get training you can go through the career link or career track uh, the workforce investment board has programs for people so there's jobs out there there's training available for people uh, there's ample opportunity right now knowing how the Chamber of Commerce works from the inside as you do right um, how are you able to do outreach into other counties to either bring workers in who live in those other right. counties or entice them to come move to Indiana County well, through partnerships, um, through uh, regional job searches, uh, through the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission, look at the big business that we're, we're trying to lure to Windy Ridge, for example. If if, if and when that happens, um, you know, we'll put together a game plan. We'll work with them on what types of jobs they need, what types of skill sets, what types of background, uh, what types of training. We'll put together a, a, an overall workforce plan for them. Reaching out across borders, you know, all of us in the, in, in the professional industries, through the chamber, through the planning department, through the commissioners, we all have great Great relationships with other uh, people, um, you know, our peers in other areas of the, the county in, or the Western Pennsylvania and across the state. So we'll rely on other resources. But you know, there's a lot of people here. We're hoping to bring more people here. Um, we'll fill those jobs. A couple of things the chamber has done in the past month or so. Um, there was uh, the exit issues. That was one of the things. That's coming up. That's coming up. Yes. Okay. Exit and issues. Exit is and issues up. is always in the fall. Uh, there was the uh, Southwest Pennsylvania Commission. Uh, they, the public participation panel, yeah, right, right? That was something uh, that yes. was going on. Um, the um, just a number of different things. The Business Hall of Fame. Yeah. Is, you know, uh, you look at that as a big celebration of the past, but mm -hmm. it really points away to the future, doesn't it? It was a busy, a busy uh, past couple of months, Todd, for sure. Yeah, we had the fourth annual Indiana County Business Hall of Fame induction dinner. Inducted uh, four much deserving individuals this year: Jim Carino, Jim Miller. Gilbert Wolfenden and Lewis McGill. Uh, it was another outstanding evening for Indiana County. And, and it was really um, moving because some of the presentations, almost all the presentations, talked about giving back to the community, community service. And then when you sit through that, and we had a, a, another great event at the Kovalcha Complex this year. Across the board, I heard from people like, wow, that really inspired me. So t to, to your point, you know, it really does lay a foundation for the future because you look at what these men had done in their lives, the differences that they've made in the lives of other people through their, through their business uh, work ethic, through their commitment to the community, and it really does help create future leaders for Indiana County. Yeah, it really talks to future mm -hmm. generations, like the young professionals. They've been right. very active. Speaking of the young professionals, you know, a number of them uh, participated in the fourth annual Paddle and Picnic event again this year. Mm -hmm. That was on May 26th in Blairsville. It was probably our best one yet. The, the river was perfect, the Connemar River. We put in in Robinson. We, we get out in Blairsville. We do about a 10-mile kayak, and then we have a picnic that the Blairsville Community Development Authority sponsors afterwards. And it was just a great day. The weather was perfect. We had about 45 or so kayakers. So that was a great day. The young professionals have a lunch and learn coming up. I believe it's this Wednesday. Uh, at St. Andrew's Village with IUP's Department of Continuing Education. So uh, the Young Professionals is a group, um, for those who aren't aware, anyone between the ages of 21 to 40 who is a chamber member, um, employee of a chamber member, can become part of the Young Professionals. And it's an opportunity for a younger generation of up-and-coming leaders to network, to uh, get together, to do community service. They're going to be adopting a section of downtown Indiana here to, to I guess it's sort of like the Adopt the Highway program. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be happening this month also, Thir there's a lot of things happening. There's been a lot of things happening. It's been a busy time of year for us. Who's the best kayaker? 
Best kayaker? Who, who's good with a paddle? <laughs> I have to say my wife, dare I say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a, that's the a cheap way out, but okay. Jim Struzzi with us from the Indiana County Chamber of Commerce. What do you have coming up? Um, we got the Chamber Business After Hours. It's our annual um, Kuzneski and Locker tent party in their parking lot. That's always a good one for Chamber members to come out to. I believe that's going to be on June 28. 20- 8th, if I'm not mistaken, June 28th or June 26th. You can find out all the, all the dates and register for everything at indianacountychamber.com. But that's always a, a great chamber business after hours. They have live music, uh, great entertainment, great food, and great networking opportunities for chamber members. So that's going to be a big one. Uh, we have a Scenery Hill after hours coming up in July. Uh, we just last week um, crowned the second winner of the Healthiest Employer Challenge. That was REA Energy. We had a nice after hours hosted by Indiana Regional Medical Center at the S. Wellness Center. So that was a nice event as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then this summer, we're going to do a lot of outreach to different communities around Indiana County, myself, my assistant Jill, some of our interns, some of our ambassadors. We're going to take a day and spend uh, the entire day in each of our different communities around Indiana County to say hello to some of our chamber members to try and recruit some new members, uh, because there's a lot of businesses out there that we we, uh, would love to see part of the chamber. He's Jim Trusey, Chamber of Commerce President. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me, Todd. It is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank here in the Voice of Indiana County, WCCF.